Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily, and I'm so happy that you are here with me today. In today's video, I am bringing you along because I am going to be making some tags from packaging material. So I've already purged my junky junk box, and I am now being more selective as to the type of junky items that I am keeping because Unfortunately, I can't work on all of the junk that I save you guys as much as I want to. It's just impossible. Believe me, I tried. Okay, so being more selective, I have kept these because they have that brown um, card stock. Some of these are from, you know, Tim Holtz ephemera packs and then others as well. So I am now showing you the beautiful tags that I have created. This is not a new concept, excuse me, this is not a new concept. I have worked on these in the past. In fact, I will share a video in the description area below. So if you'd like to go take a look at um, that video where I also work with all kinds of different packaging and I make some pretty awesome tags. But today we're going to focus on these. I'm going to make two different styles. This one I used the Tim Holtz packaging and I used, let's see, ephemera and die cut pieces from Paper Studio. Oh, look at this cute little ribbon, you guys. But stick around because I'm going to show you how we can make our own printed um, ribbon if you don't have this one. Okay. So where was I? Where was I, you guys? Okay. Oh, all the different things that I'm using because if you are going to craft along with me, Go get your junky junk. And I used different die kits and ephemera pieces from Paper Studio, which is a brand at Hobby Lobby, but I also used fussy cut items uh, from Digitals and then also Tim Holtz ephemera and then Tim Holtz washi tape. So just lots of different, different things. And I collage on the front. I did some zigzag stitching around the tag and then just kind of put it all together. Oh, we're also going to do some gold embossing. And right now I'm showing you a black marker that I use. So I did stitch around my tags, but I also used the marker to do a doodly border all around it. So sometimes I doodle border and sometimes I stitch border and they both look just as cute, you guys. So we just kind of collage and we're going to put all of our little junky bits all together and layer on top. Believe me, when I first started on this, I wasn't too sure about it. I had my doubts, but you have to trust the process, you guys. Collaging can be a little bit tricky sometimes, but just trust the process. And if it doesn't work out the first time, you keep going until it looks good to you. There isn't anyone else that we are here to impress but ourselves, okay? It is our art, and as long as we're happy with it, then we're going to roll with it. I also grabbed some papers that I'm going to collage with. I grabbed some coffee dyed papers, some order slips that I coffee dyed a while back, and then also a sheet of vintage music paper. And now I'm just going to lay down some scrap paper because I am going to be using glue and, but the main reason why I put the scrap paper down, you guys, you're not going to believe this. I don't know if you noticed my bright green shirt that was, ref that was reflecting off of the glass mat. <laughs> oh my, you couldn't miss it, you guys, but I didn't want to point it out to you before because then that's all you were going to look at. But I'm wearing a bright lime green neon colored running shirt. It is so bright, you guys. And I didn't realize it until after I recorded that it was just glowing off of the glass mat, you guys. And the reason is because I put my running gear on so that once I was done filming my video, then I can go outside for an outside run because, oh my gosh, today was amazing. What a beautiful day today. And we'll talk more about the weather in just a moment. Let me just show you what I'm doing here. I grabbed some Tim Holtz washi tape that I have been in quotation marks holding <laughs> and it was 
you know, it's those things, you guys, that we love and we don't use as much because we don't want to use it up. Okay, we're, we're, stop, we're not doing that anymore. So I'm getting better and better at going through my supplies and actually using all of my treasured items in my projects. So this week we are using washi tape that I haven't used in a long time and also packaging because the packaging box was getting bigger and I had to weed it out. Now I'm grabbing little bits and pieces of the washi tape and I'm actually stripping it and tearing it just to cover some of the print that's on the packaging. I'm not gonna cover all of it. The reason is we don't have to. You guys, we there's already text on the packaging that we could use to our advantage. It adds interest if we just leave it there. We don't have to cover it up. On all the others, I did cover it up, and but as I was working, I realized I didn't have to because we it just adds to the look of it. Do you know what I mean? It's no different from us taking text stamps and a price stamp and or a, a sticker or other ephemera with that similar print on it and adding it back to the tag. With these tags, they are already there and it works well. Watch, just remember what I said, trust the process. And if at the end you don't like it, well, you can cover it all up with the washi tape. But believe me, you're gonna like, you're going to like the end result. So after I applied washi tape on these two tags, I am just grabbing bits of pieces that I'm tearing off from this vintage music paper. I only need a little bit. I don't want to cover up the entire tag. I want it to be clear that I have repurposed junk to make these tags, you guys. So I don't want to cover up the fact. In fact, I think it's really cool to be able to use our junky bits that we save. Remember, we are junk journalers. We create beautiful things from junk, things that we would have in another life thrown away into the garbage. But we don't do that anymore. We are certified junk journalers, you guys. <laughs> Unofficial junk journalers is what I like to say. And so we are going to make it pretty clear that we can make pretty cool stuff with the junky junk. And that's what we're doing here. So only a little bit of collage. I don't want to cover up the whole thing. So when I put it in my junk journals or I include it in Happy Mail or I give it away as part of a gift, the recipient will look at it and go, oh my gosh, this is so cool. This was made from packaging. That's the reaction I want you guys. Plus, it makes me feel good that I didn't throw it away. But I did recycle a bunch of other ones. Only packaging I knew I really wasn't going to do anything with. And I knew that because it had been in my junky junk box for a year. So if it's been in there that long, you guys, chances are I'm not going to use it. So I just recycled it. But these right here, these are special tags. <laughs> I love the feel of them. I love that craft paper. And of course, you know, the Tim Holtz ones, those are like, those are like designer paper. It, they're really cool, the packaging. And I know, you know, if you have Tim Holtz packaging, they have this really cool uh, design on them. So we can use that to our advantage when we create our projects. For these, I am going to use some of the fussy cut flowers. And I did a video just recently on how I fussy cut. And so I'm just digging into this little bin and I'm going to select a couple to use as the focal point in these tags. These are digitals from, that information will be down below <laughs> because I can't remember off the top of my head, you guys, so much information. My brain is like on overload. But if I miss mentioning any of the items that I am using today, please feel free to open up that description area just below the video and I will try to load and pack as much information as I possibly can. Now these do have a little white border all around. When I fussy cut, I don't fussy cut to the edge of the image. I don't mind leaving a little white border. But for these cards, I'm just going to soften up that white border 
and add a little bit of ink all around the edges with some vintage photo. Just a little bit. So it so it looks more uh, uh, cohesive with the craft uh, uh, packaging tag. I'm applying a little bit of glue. Let me tell you that I wish I had glue stick. I don't have any glue stick. I have used up every single glue stick that I owned, you guys, and I'm very proud that I did. Um, I've mentioned it many times before that I'm not buying any more adhesive until I use up all the adhesive that I had because I was, I, I found that I was buying glue and adhesives in excessive amounts. Like I wasn't using it fast enough. And, and that's, that was just, that was really just wasting my money on things I didn't need. Um, things I wanted and there's nothing wrong with that. The problem was some of my glue was getting old and because it, I had, I had had it for a long time. So anyway, I don't have any glue stick. This, this project, uh, if you have glue stick, maybe that will be a little bit better. <laughs> I'm just using all of the uh, PBA glues and all of the wet glues that I have. And then, and then, if I get to the point where I absolutely need glue stick, then I will go get it, you guys. But right now, I just want to use up all the other glue that I have. Do you know what I mean? The same thing with like washi tape. There was a lot of washi tape that I wasn't using and I had to chuck it, a lot of it, because it just dried up and I, it wasn't salvageable. Okay, so now for these tags right here, excuse me, as an added embellishment, I am looking for butterflies through the Paper Studio die cut, die cut packs. And these are little packs that are found in Hobby Lobby. I'm being a nosy neighbor, you guys. I'm looking out my window because there is a big moving truck that is blocking our driveway. And I'm like, did my parents order anything? Are they having furniture delivered? So I'm looking out the window, so I'm a little bit distracted here. Okay, anyway, going back to the glue. The cool thing about the wet glue that I'm using here is it's a cocktail of glue. It's just a bunch of different glues that I mixed in into these little bottles. And then it has a really nice fine tip. So it's nice. I do like that I can use this because it gets into all of those really skinny, skinny bits of paper. And now I'm adding some little butterflies. So just collage. I'm using the flower as the focal point. I did have some butterflies that I could have also used as a focal point, which were much larger than these little ones. But I opted for the flowers in, with, these, with these particular tags. I'm still looking out the window and there's no movement. There's no action out there. I'm just wondering what's going on. Okay. Oh, this is the cool part, you guys. This piece of card is from the back of a paper pad, a scrapbooking paper pad. And this is what I used to golden boss the stamp, which reads Handle with Care. This is a great stamp set. It is by Tim Holtz. And I will have that information below if you are interested in knowing more about it. And I'm going to do some gold embossing. I was playing around with these stamps a few days ago and I was working on a different project and I couldn't quite figure out what I wanted. So I was just playing around with embossing and different colors of embossing and different stamps. And I made some of these and oh my gosh, I just love the way they turned out, you guys. Just love them. So because I wanted it to be on somewhat of a sturdy paper, almost to have the feel of a real ticket, you know, something with a little bit of weight, I am using Versamark and I stamped it on the craft side of this card. And if I'm going to need several. So I'm stamping about six of them with the Versamark embossing ink. And now I'm going to grab my gold embossing powder. 
I keep my embossing powders in these little acrylic drawers. I've, I've done this for a few years now and it works best for me. I kept the little con empty containers in the drawer just so that I can, I know I can reference what uh, embossing powder I'm using. And these happen to be Stampin' Up embossing powders that are many, 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 many years old, but they work just fine. So now I'm just dusting the gold embossing powder over the Versamark. And they just look so great, you guys. And all of this just by accident. I am a huge advocate when it comes to playing with your things. Okay, well, the big moving truck is gone. That was weird. Okay. Okay, back to what I'm doing. Oh my gosh, squirrel, you guys. Oh, what was, I was saying that... I think it's important to be able to play with your things because an experiment with different mediums, um, different colors, because you never know when it's going to come in handy. And playing around with your supplies will help you explore new options for future projects. And that's exactly what happened here. These didn't work out for the other project, project I was working on last week. But then when I saw it, I glanced over and remembered I still had some of these tickets that I had made before. I'm like, oh my gosh, how perfect they would be for these tags. So playing around with your supplies is always the best when, what is it called? It's called mindless crafting, you guys. And that's, that's what I do sometimes. I just sit and make and create for no specific reason, but just so that I can become more familiar with my supplies and my tools and different techniques and learning new skills and things like that. So, mindless crafting. We need to do more of that. So now I'm just gonna cut around these little tickets. Now I could have embossed on either side. I could have done on the white side or, you know, whatever side. If you're going to do something like this, choose the side that works best for you. If you don't have card um, like this, maybe you don't have, you know, the, the chipboard from like a paper pad. You can also use the inside of a cereal box because it's basically the same color of, of craft. So now fussy cutting, just trimming around it because I'm going to use this just like I did on the other tags. And oh my gosh. So I just love the gold embossing. It is one of my favorite embossing powders. And I like using a little bit of gold on most of my projects. If it isn't gold Heidi Swap Shine, wait, Heidi Swap Gold Shine, <laughs> that is now discontinued, but I still have a teeny amount of it left. But if it isn't gold splatters on my projects, then it's either gold wax or gold embossing. I just love the look, you guys. Okay, I realized I needed a couple more, so I'm just going to cut those. Cut those to have them at the ready for the tags. I think I make a total of three tags. I make these two with the Iron Orchid packaging. And Iron Orchid, I, I don't remember if this is something I picked up at Joann's, at Michael's, or at Hobby Lobby. I can't remember, but it was little jewelry little jewelry bits and pieces. And this is just the leftover packaging. But I'm, I love the way these, these turned out, you guys. And I'm actually working and building my ephemera and all of my embellishments for the new junk journals that I'm working on. I wish I had them close by so that I can show you a sneak peek of some of the ones that I'm working on, but I will tell you that I am working on several altered little golden books. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. <laughs> so, so cute. I just love them. The last time I worked on these was last summer. And so I just uh, had a bunch of books that I came across that had been discarded or were ready to be discarded at the thrift store. And then my sister picked up a few for me. Anyway, I have about a dozen of these little golden books, and so 
that is what I'm working on. Oh, okay, this is what I'm going to show you now. Check this out, you guys. I love this ribbon. And this is a cotton ribbon that I have also been holding as one of my treasured items, but it is so cute. I just had to use it. I picked it up at Joann's last year sometime. Now, if you do not have this beautiful little cotton trim with the bird stamped on it, I'm gonna show you how you can make your own. All you need is a tiny little stamp, and it doesn't have to be a bird, but if it's a bird, it's cute. Any little stamp that you have, a mini stamp. Now, this is muslin fabric, and I just tore a strip that is about the same width as this little birdie ribbon that I have, which is about one inch wide. And now I am going to reach over, I'm going to grab my itty little, itty bitty little bird stamp. And I am going to stamp and make my own, my own ribbon, my own birdie printed ribbon. So cute. I have showed, shown you in the past how I stamp on fabric, but I've never made like ribbon, faux ribbon like this. But the technique is very similar. And I used a stamp set from Stampin' Up, you guys. This is old, vintage, not old, it's vintage from the late 90s. And I picked it up on Etsy from a shop called For the Love of Stamps. I think that's what her shop is called. She has such a great, great selection of vintage Stampin' Up stamps. <laughs> and in fact, I have purchased several from her um, over the past couple of years. And I found this one, I think it's from 1998. It's called Sampler. And it comes with all of these cute little mini stamps. And there was a cute little birdhouse that I could have used as well. And they have, oh my gosh, this bunny and a snowman. It's like you can use it all year long. But because I am trying to replicate the bird ribbon, I decided to use this one. And I'm just dipping it into the archival ink because it's a nice black ink. And just very carefully, I don't wanna get any of the stamp borders around and I'm very glad I did not. So I am just stamping it the length of the ribbon. And oh my gosh, it's already looking so cute, you guys. And you can use different colors too. I'm just using black here, but as I was doing it, I was like, oh, I could use green and I can use uh, red to match your work. Oh my gosh, so cute. And I actually like the frayed edges of this muslin fabric because it adds to the, the, the tags are kind of grungy, kind of, kind of shabby a little bit. And so having this torn edge on the ribbon just kind of fits it works well with the whole aesthetic of this tag look at how cute you who you'd never know the difference you guys you would never know that i hand stamped that that little birdie on that on that strip of fabric oh it's gonna look so cute you are going to love it okay so now my tags are nice and dry everything is is well adhered and now I am going to stitch all around one of the tags so I'm going to step away for just a minute and because of the magic of recording and editing here I am voila I have zigzag zigzag stitched all around the tag and it's just about finished you guys now this other tag I am not going to zigzag stitch. Instead, I have opted to do a doodly border all around the edges. Now, I will say that I love the stitching detail on all of my work. I just love it. If I'm able to do it, chances are I'm going to machine stitch it because I just love the look. But what if you don't want to do it? And that's one of the reasons why I am doing this because if you don't have a sewing machine that you want to use on your paper, 
uh, you can do this. So I like to show you, I like to have options for you. So if we don't do it one way, we can do it another way. Or you can even have your own way of doing it too. But the more ideas, the better, you guys. The more options, the better, I think. I think so. And it looks just as cute. I love it. So there are some things that I'm not able to run through the sewing machine. So, of course, I will do a doodly border because I love that as well. So this tag that I did the doodly border on, this one will get the the uh, commercially produced uh, ribbon. The one I got at Joann's. In fact, I just purchased some more, you guys, from um, online because they were having... It was they were having a sale on ribbon and they happened to have this bird trim again and so I purchased it oh but but now that I've used it like I can't get enough of it now I just want to use it on everything but now that I can also make it had I made it before I ordered it I wouldn't have ordered it because then I, I would have known that I could have just made it and this one gets to use the one we just made. Look at it, you guys. Oh my gosh. So stinky cute. I love these tags so much. Just absolutely love them. And the what's really cool about this is that the back can be used for more collage if you want or for journaling if you're going to put it in in, um, in a junk journal, if you're going to use these tags, like if you make these tags and you're going to use them to attach to a gift, because these, these make great gift tags, you guys. You can just clip them to a gift sack or a present. And then on the back, you can write your, you know, your to and from and your little sentiment. Yes. I'm sure the recipient would appreciate it. So cute. Okay, I've just received two phone calls and I am taking a moment here to reply and text my callers that I'm doing a voiceover. So I'm on voiceover duty right now. We'll call you back. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to work on one of the Tim Holtz packaging uh, tags. And I grabbed some of this coffee dyed sales order paper that I have had for a few years. I don't use it enough. And so my goal lately has been to go through all the things that I have and, and make something with them. And so you could see here that I'm working with a lot of things I haven't worked with in a long time. So just cleaning off my little spatula because I'm using it to smooth, to smooth the little collage to get all the little bumpy bumps, bumpy bumps off. It's a great little tool. If you don't have one of these little spatulas, I highly recommend one. You can also use a bone folder, but one of these works so well. And I think it's like this one is for like auto body for like Bondo. <laughs> I think it's what it's for. Okay. Let's see, what else am I going to do? Oh, okay, so now I am going to use a focal point from this die cut ephemera pack. And I wanna use one of the large flowers. You know, you guys, when I saw this at the Hobby Lobby, I was so impressed with the amount of die cuts that is in this package. And it's under $5. But if you wait until it's 40% off, then you save some money. But they're always out. So this is one that I would pay regular price for because they're seldom there. Like everybody loves these and so they're, they're usually gone. So I grabbed, I grabbed two packs, the last two they had. I am that person sometimes, you guys. I am. If there's two left, I'm going to grab the two because I know I will use them. But if there were three... I would have left the third one, I think. <laughs> I know, I am that person. My sister teases me about it all the time. She's like, wow, you're not even going to leave any behind? 
Well, yeah, but there's only two. Okay. And this was a cute flower. I didn't know this one was in there until just now when I dumped it out. When I first bought it, you know, I went through all of them just to familiarize myself with the die cuts. And I don't remember seeing this one in there. So this was a nice little find. So I'm going to set that one aside for just a moment so that it, it sticks down. Because I'm not using glue sticks, glue stick, I'm not getting all on the edges. And so I really want to make sure that the, the, the die cut sticks to the paper. So that's why I put some weight on it so that it dries flat. Otherwise, it tends to curl up on the ends. That's why I'm using the acrylic block on the die cuts. I should really give these blocks a good wash. They are full of paint and glue, you guys. And they've been like that for a long time. I keep saying I'm going to give them a good wash and then I don't. And then all of a sudden it's years have gone by. And I think of it though every time I use them. So I love these. I'm probably going to be making a lot more. These handle with care little tickets. And just have them at the ready. And I'm going to try doing them in different colors. I have a few different colored embossing powders. So I'm gonna play around with those some more. I just love it so much. Maybe use a few different stamps as well. Okay, so I need a butterfly die cut and I think I used them all up from the Paper Studio packs because I did make a lot of these tags. And so if you don't have the Paper Studio and but you have like Tim Holtz ephemera bits, um, those work great as well or if you have digitals I do have digital butterflies that I could have used or magazine cutouts we're going to use whatever we have okay whatever we have so I like here that I used digital fussy cuts the paper studio brand die cuts and also Tim Holtz die cuts so I like that just a little bit of everything sprinkled in my projects all right, what is next? What are we doing next? I can't remember, but let's just watch and see. Oh, I think my next step here is I am going to stitch. I'm going to add stitching on this one. So I'm going to step away for just a moment and voila, I am back. The stitching turned out great, but I realized something as I was running it through the sewing machine, you guys. I forgot to collage the back of this tag. <laughs> now, the the tags on the left, I didn't have to do anything to the back because there wasn't anything to cover up. But these Tim Holtz tags, oh my gosh, I was going to collage on the back of it because I'm making these to use as journaling spots for the altered little golden books that I'm going to make. Completely spaced it, but that's okay. It's you know, I made a mistake, but we can fix it, right? I'm just going to grab uh, some some of this collage paper or this paper that I'm using for collage and a little bit of washi tape, and I'm going to cover up the back. In hindsight, you guys, I also realized that I should have probably collaged on the front of the back of these cards and then reserved the let me see. I don't want to confuse anybody. So I collaged on the front of the Tim Holtz tag. There is minimal print on that, but I should have reserved the front for the back and then collaged on the back to use as the front. Does that make sense? <laughs> then I wouldn't have made this mistake because I don't mind the Tim Holtz. You know how the front of the tag said Tim Holtz on it? I don't mind that at all. And if it's, if it's visible on the back, then even better. I would have just collaged the back of the packaging and used that as the front of the tag. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but either way, we discovered something new, a new idea and something that I can, you know, continue to work with, with all of the others that I have left. So it's okay. We can remedy it. I've always said, with a little bit of glue, some scissors, some scratch paper, some collage paper, we can fix anything, you guys. All right, just smoothing it out, adding a little bit of washi tape, just so it looks like this was intentional to cover up my big boo-boo. 
but it all turns out, you guys, these turn out so great. They really do. I'm trying to tear right down the middle of this tag. <laughs> I'm struggling a little bit. And I think it's because I, my fingertips are so full of glue. I really should have stepped away and washed my hands. So now just putting little bits and pieces of washi tape down so it looks like I did this on purpose. <laughs> but they turn out, they turn out great, you guys. Notice how on the other one I used music paper to collage the back because these will, they don't just have to be used for journaling spots. They can also be used to add pictures to on the back of them. You know, photographs. Oh, how nice. Those would look really nice with the photographs. And now adding some of our DIY ribbon. I really do love how this ribbon turned out, you guys. I, I just love it. And I am going to make a bunch more. I'm going to play around with some of the other mini stamps that I have. And also use different colored inks. But I just, I love, I love how shabby they look and how kind of grungy, but more than anything, how junky they look. Now, I thought I was done with these tags, but I love gold splatters. It is my favorite little embellishment to add to all of my projects. Plus, it'll work well with that little golden embossed tag that's on there. So I like using the Heidi Swap Gold Shine, and this is the last of it that I have. It makes me really sad to know that it has been discontinued, but I have talked about other, other ways that we can add gold sparkle to our projects, like watered down gold paint. So I was going to use the larger bottle. There's a little bit left in there, but I could not get that cap off. It is glued shut for some reason. But I do have this mini bottle. There is a tiny bit amount of gold shine left in there. Just a tiny bit. And I remember when I knocked it over when it was full and lost more than half of the shine that was, oh my gosh, in that bottle. I almost cried. <laughs> oh, it was, it was tragic. So now just adding a little bit of these sprinkles. Now on camera here, I'm only showing you the two that I am doing this with, but I will go back and add gold shine to all of the others only because I just love how it turned out. It's so cute. If in doubt, sprinkle gold shine on it. And if you don't have this, um, water down gold, gold metallic acrylic paint will work just as nice, just as great. And I've, I've done it before in other videos as well. I'm gonna go run that bottle under hot water and see if I can loosen that cap. But ta-da, these are done. Oh my gosh, so cute, you guys. They turn out so nice. I'm not gonna mess with these too much so that I give them a chance to dry. But look at how beautiful they turned out, you guys. Now I'm just gonna display all the ones that I have made. And then here I am with my bright green shirt. By the way, I did go running today after I recorded this video earlier today. And I am currently training for a 10K, which is 6.2 miles. This year, I am participating in four 10K races. I started running last year, you guys. And last year, I ran nothing but 5Ks, and I did really well. But this year, I'm challenging myself. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you guys being here, and I will see you next time. Bye!